Hello everyone! Today's video is part 3 of the How to Draw Digitally for Beginners series. This video covers what I use to color, a brief look at the magic wand tool, clipping layers, and how I color skin. If you haven't seen the other two videos in this series, I will put a link to them in the description. Now before we get started, I just wanted to say that for some reason my screen capture program slightly alters the colors of my picture. It seems to increase the contrast and up the saturation. I'm not totally sure why it does that, um, but here is what the picture looks like without any editing from the screen capture program that I use. Um, so let's get started. Now first I'm going to go over what colors I am using. I am using the eyedropper tool right now. Uh, first I have my color that I'm going to call 1. It's kind of in the orange E area and it is very close to white. I'm going to use this as my highlight color. Then I have color 2 which moves a little bit more to the reddish side and is a little darker than color 1. And then I have color 3 which is almost totally in the red area and it is darker than color 2. And I have color 4 which is pretty much totally in the red area and is darker than number 3. Number 5 is like a reddish purple tone and I'm going to use it in the deep shadows. And I didn't end up using um, the yellow color, color 0. Um, I sometimes use yellow but I decided not to in this picture. Now I'm going to make a new line art folder just to keep things neat and tidy. I'm going to click on the new uh, folder button down there and we'll see a new folder pop up and I'm going to name it line art. Uh, I do this just to keep things more tidy and so things don't get all jumbled up in the mess of layers. Um, I'm going to click on layer 7, hold down shift on the keyboard and then it'll select all the layers and I drag them into the layer folder. And now things are more tidy and not so messy. Now I'm going to add another folder for my coloring. And I'm going to name it color. And I'm going to add a new layer by pressing the new raster layer button. And that is going to be the layer I use for my base skin tone. Now before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the magic wand tool. You can find the magic wand tool by pressing W on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do is it selects an area and allows you to color it in. But if you don't increase your selection size, you'll get these tiny little white dots all around the border. And I find them kind of ugly and I don't want them there, so I try to get rid of them. Um, so if I just fill it in without increasing my selection size, we'll see itty bitty white pixels around the edge of the circle. And I want to get rid of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the increase selection size button. And I'm going to increase my selection by about 2 pixels. 2 pixels is usually enough to get rid of the little white specks. And then if I fill it in, there will be no more little white specks around the border. If you're, using, if you're using a light color, then you won't really see the white specks. But if you're using like a dark color, like maybe a dark blue or dark green, um, you'll see the border. So that's just a nice trick to get rid of the little white border. Now I'm going to use my base color, number 2, and I'm going to click on the areas that I want to fill in with the base tone. And just try to fill in all the areas where her skin will be. And I did color in her eyes right now. I'm going to do a tutorial on coloring her eyes. It's just I thought she'd look a little creepy if I didn't <laughs> uh, color her eyes in and colored her skin in. Okay, so now I'm going to make... Uh, first I'm going to get rid of that because we don't need that. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to make a clipping layer. A clipping layer makes it so I can uh, color in a layer and it won't go out of it. 
So if you click on the side of the layer, the clipping option won't pop up. You have to click on the thumbnail of the layer and you'll see clip at layer below. And whatever layer is below the clipping layer, it will clip to that layer or I won't be able to draw out of the layer it's clipped to. So if I take a color and just scribble everywhere, it will only go on the area of the skin layer that I have below the clipping layer which is very, very handy and makes it a lot easier to keep everything clean and in the lines. So the tool that I use for coloring is the airbrush tool. You can find it by pressing B on the keyboard. I have it on the soft setting. Now a few of the settings of the airbrush tool is hardness. Now the hardness setting, if it is on the lower side, it will be very soft. I have a soft edge. And if I make it higher, it'll have a hard edge. And brush density basically makes it more dense or less dense. So if it's really dense, it'll be more opaque. And if it's less dense, it won't be as opaque. Um, I usually have hardness set to about 2 and brush density set to about 15 or 20. But it kind of depends on what I am shading um, for my settings. Now I'm going to use um, color 3 for the shadows and I'm just going to add some of the shadows to her face. Now adding shadows can be very tricky. Um, some places that shadows often appear are like under the eyes, like where the eyebrow or around the eyes where like the eyebrow bone hangs over, um, around the cheeks of the face, under the nose, um, under the hair. And the light is coming from the upper left, so most of the shadows are going to be um, on the lower right or like under things, so like under her neck, I mean under her head and on her neck. And the lighting, the shadows will change depending on the lighting. Um, when I'm adding the shadows to her neck, I turn my clipping, my shadow layer off so I can select the area under the neck. And then I increase my selection size and then I can use a really big brush and it won't get on her face. So that's what I do when I add the shadows under the neck. Um, now I am using color 4 and I am just darkening up the shadows and making them darker. Um, so when I'm coloring, uh, the base tone will usually start as like an orangey or yellow color. And then as the shadows get darker, I keep moving more towards the reds and oranges and purples. So basically, the darker the shadow gets, the more towards the warm colors I go. Uh, that's just kind of my style and how I like to do it. Uh, feel free to play around with colors and find how you like to color things. Um, now I'm kind of going in with the purple. I always just like the way purple makes the shadows look. And I will also be adding some red color to her ears and um, her cheekbones and on, on her nose. I always just feel like it makes it look more lively when I add the red to the face. And I always just kind of like how it looks. Now I'm going to add some highlights. I'm using color 1 and uh, places where highlights often appear are like um, on the cheekbones, um, on the bridge of the nose, on the forehead if the hair isn't covering it too much, and like on the lips. I also like to add reflective light. So like if a light is shining say against a white, lo a white wall, then the light will bounce off of the wall and like back on to like the face. And I often just like to add reflective lighting in the dark shadow areas just because I find it helps make it look more three dimensional and I often just really like how it looks. <laughs> Now 
Now, um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, correction layers. Correction layers allow me to correct things that I want to correct. So to find um, correction layers, I go to layer, then correction layers, and then I am using level correction. It allows me to kind of darken the shadows and lighten the highlights. Um, I often use correction layers just to kind of make things look how I see fit. Sometimes I use the hue and saturation um, correction layer. Sometimes I use the brightness and contrast layer. It kind of just depends on what I want to change. Right now I'm kind of changing the level correct the levels of the picture. So we are pretty much done with this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next video.